Welcome to the Emptive Podcast, where we chat about cloud-based solutions that make selling your e-commerce products easier, more profitable, and effective. In this episode, we'll be talking deep fake. What are they? How are they used in sales and marketing? And also explore how the name can be misleading. Today, I think we're going to talk about deep fake, one of my favorite topics. Oh, and spooky. It is spooky, isn't it? It's going to be <laughs> one of the has a really interesting name. Um, and, and it's actually kind of confusing because, I mean, what is a deep fake, right? right? I mean, you've probably heard of them. I think everybody at this point has a little bit or they've seen examples, you know, Tom Cruise and others that are not really Tom Cruise. Or the but Game of Thrones. There, Game there's of tons Thrones. of famous ones. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there. You know, Obama doing some stuff. There's political ones. There's some really funny ones. Um and, and really that type of deep fake, you know, I think is even bigger in the porn industry, which we can touch on a little bit. But I think um, uh, what I want to talk to do today about, though, is really a deep double. I think it's a, a, a twist that, you know, we kind of coined this name deep double versus a deep fake. Um, and then maybe see why why it's a little different than a deep fake. What is uh, the, the main difference between the well, two like, of them? I think in general, I say a deep double is, is not an avatar. It's not, it's really a person being doubled, right? So in other words, it's with permission. There's a whole lot of reasons really what, what a difference would be, but uh, and you're, we're, yeah. And and we're we're going to, I think we're going to get into the terminology, but the, I think you were, you were telling me earlier that some of the negative connotations that are associated with a deep fake and that it's, actually can be used for lots of other things, but it doesn't have that negative connotation of being fake and bad and right. um, illegal kind of, you know, like walking that line between what's what's legal and what's not. Um, so essentially what someone does is in a traditional deep fake is they, they take a a video of a famous person or a celebrity. It doesn't have to be, but I think that's usually the best example, right? Yeah, it would be a, what I would consider stolen in a sense. You don't have permission necessarily. You take pictures. And usually I think they're made up of pieces of different places too, different mm -hmm. video clips, different audio clips. And then you're doing it, and maybe it's not malicious, but you're not doing it with the person's consent necessarily. And then you're making it say something they probably didn't sanction, right? That would be a deep right. fake. Or putting a celebrity's face on a, another model's body in a porn, right? Examples are those. Yeah. Uh, what we're referring, when we say deep double, I'm referring to the opposite of that, where you are sanctioned. You're actually taking photography of a famous celebrity or a person, or it could be anyone. It could be you or me, John, right? Right. And you're, you're basically making a, a basically a deep fake, but with a, with a more um, uh, positive, attitude for it right in other words um now you can reuse that and there's a lot of uses what like training videos oh yeah tutor tutorials i mean come on you can think of a bunch of others where but i'm thinking more in the sales area you know mm -hmm. it in my opinion it, it, it for e-commerce wise you know because i mean where are we going with this i'm referring to deep doubles uh being used in for sales obviously and for so uh think of all the celebrities that you know, sell different products, you know, um, you know, good well, influencers. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. Correct. could be the, from the, my pillow guy to, you know, the neat, <laughs> my newest team pop person, right? I mean, <laughs> any of them could do what I'm talking about here. Um, at least in part. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of, um, the power of this is, is, is pretty oh, crazy. Immense, you know, immense, being able to immense. like generate content, without really generating the content. Um, right. We were even talking before about how this could really change like the e-learning atmosphere, um, e even oh, yeah. selling. I mean, that is like selling content, right? Like courses right. are content you're selling. It's the product. Um, even it, it's just crazy. Um, and some of the other terminology that we're going to use uh, throughout the, this episode, obviously we've covered deep fake. Um, right. And <clears throat> there's also say avatar. Yeah, right. avatar a lot. And that's an icon or a figure that's representing a person or something, right? And a lot of mm -hmm. times that's in a video game 
internet forum or you know a chat mm -hmm. group it, it's sometimes it's it's a cartoony shape or a silhouette or some or, are pretty good yeah i've yeah. seen some really good ones i almost couldn't tell the difference really right I mean, snap or like the snapchat avatars like little like cartoony apple has them now too um, they all do yeah um, most video games have an avatar you know and this you'll hear you know when we say deep uh deep double or, or deep fake uh a lot of times i think the first thing people think of is the video component but there is an audio component that goes along with it as well and, and right. that can yep. be that can be created too um that's correct Yep. And sometimes they're called voice skins or voice clones, and they can be used in really similar ways that these doubles can be used too. Um, That's for correct. Good or for bad. <laughs> well, in a way, like um, video has to have the audio, but you can have audio without the video. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I could right. make somebody say something and put it on the radio, for example, and never have video. But you need both of them in order to do what we're talking about. Um, you don't necessarily always need both to do a deep fake, but the ones you see. So how, how did this come about? Like what, wow, was, the, yeah. what was the creation of this? Cause there's some different, uh, the internet has some different ideas, but there's kind of one that sort of bubbles to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. It starts off kind of slow, but I think, you know, you got to hold on cause this, this is going to pick up speed as we go. So like the history of it is, is, I mean, as back as when photography was created, you know, um, even in, you know, the twenties before Photoshop, people were making ghost images in the background of a photo, you know, and selling mm -hmm. them for a nickel, you know what I mean? I mean, as soon as you had photography, you had people trying to fake shit. Right. So, right. um, but then it became more like when Photoshop came in, then you, what's real? Is that real? You know, and then all the retouching of modeling and, you know, took away a mole or this. The and the 90s and the 2000s, yeah. it was hot, 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 hot. Mm -hmm. Now it's speeding up even faster, right? I mean, then, then it, I think really the porn industry kind of got involved, like, you know, like a lot of things on the internet, you know, um, right? So porn really dumped time and money and effort into this and, uh, and sort of pushed it along. Um, yeah, for and that reason. was taking the faces of celebrities and yeah. applying them to models. Correct. And releasing these tapes, these leaked tapes and right. stuff, right? Yeah. And, and you can think of it this way. It's a, an easier way to make money and the curiosity and the fact, I mean, a lot of reasons why that, you know, took off like crazy. Oh, like sure. That. And and the, the porn industries, I mean, has been pivotal in uh, technological advances, specifically in like the streaming of video. Um, That's right pop-ups originated in uh from porn like you know the pop-up messages but i mean we use them all over like the idea of a pop-up isn't just that annoying ad it's also a pop-up for an email subscription it, it's so a lot of technology that's right yeah. comes from the porn industry and a lot of ar and vr stuff is going to be hot off the um off that industry pun intended <laughs> 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 well, they so the the term deep fake. I think some people credit to 2017. I, I read, you know, the, uh, a Reddit user by the name of Deep Fake. But then right. there was there's there, there's pieces of that going back and in, into the even into the 90s. So I mean, who is the real founder and what were the actual? I mean, I don't. I'm not here to discuss or pick one or the other. But it the word deep fake is now kind of ingrained in everybody's mind and it represents one thing but it does represent faking and that's i think the negative connotation you're talking about right right i think the technology is amazing like i said hold on because it's going to get wilder as we go and you're going to have things like right now it might be a fixed what the difference between fixed and uh which we can get into a little bit later where it's more personalized and real time i think that's the difference too so fixed is i go i sit in my room and i craft this deep fake and I put it out on the internet or whatever, it took hours. It's not going to change, right? Right. Static. It stays like right. in that one form, almost like a video that you play. It stays in that. Yeah. It's in like that, it's permanently. Yeah. I can go back and change, you know, what words you said, but I have to create another copy and then put it out. Where I think we're really heading is where we, we now start to do it in real time. So right now you can do it with voice. For example, I could type on a keyboard and it'll talk, you know, it'll be, you know, President Obama or Trump talking and it would be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Well, now you take that to video. Now you're just basically if 
using the video and the audio. And as I say, a script, we're going to say the word script a lot, but that's really it. Now that avatar, right. And we'll use that term, that fake person, that double, that deep double will be saying whatever I typed on my keyboard. Hmm. Right. I, I mean, I don't think the technology is quite there yet, but I would say it's right around the corner because they have all these pieces, you know, putting each one of those parts together. Right. Um, and you start with the audio. I mean, that's where I want to start. I mean, get, get a little bit of um, some funding. We could have some fun with this. But you'd start with audio, I would think, and then you would try to work the video in, and then you would try to work them together. And maybe it wouldn't look great at first and perfect, but, you know, uh, the computing power is going to go up. Then you add AI to it, uh, which that's the is not the component. Well, yeah, not the machine learning that's used to make the deep fake, because that's what we'll get into that. In right. A, right. But more of the what you could have it say based on what you said. So it's like I don't have to sit there and type into a script. The computer's answering the question. The conversational so, component. Right, conversational of, AI. Yeah. Right. It's the so, chat based. You know, we say chat, but really it should be conversational uh, yeah. based that just that back and forth interaction. Um, so and. I mean, I think we can see that how powerful this technology is just in in now how it's kind of just starting. Like there's, <clears throat> you know, it, a Tesla stock had crashed when yeah. they did that deep fake of, you know, Elon mm -hmm. Musk smoking a joint on some show. Yeah, um, <laughs> Donald Trump, uh, uh, <laughs> like There's flew home cool. early from some like NATO yeah. event because everyone like made fun of him. And there was like a deep fake of it. Yeah. Um, it, it like, you know, it, it stock markets move. It's just crazy that like on kind of what's happening. You know. It makes sense though, right? Like yeah. we, we see news, we react to news, right? right? We see video of a person doing something and we react to it. Now we're kind of being put in this world where, you know, first it was don't, don't, uh, don't believe everything you read on the internet. And now, right. <laughs> you know, it's don't believe everything you see. See on the internet. And that, right. that's tough. Right. I see there's my a lot of psychology, right? There is psychology in all this, in psychology of wanting to be near or follow, you know, people of influence. And I mean, I think it's in our, it's in our DNA. We, you know, you're not going to turn away, right? And, and this political season, I have a feeling you're going to see more, maybe not in 22, but in 24. I mean, certainly. So... I, there's probably no, they're, okay, they are coming up with some rules. Let, let's, let's go backwards a little bit too. They're trying to make tokenization in some form that you put on the video that indicates it's fake. Authenticity. Uh, that is, yeah. or that it's a, of, uh, we talk about well, the authenticity of, of a real, like a, <clears throat> a deep double. We would right. say, well, we authenticate it in a way that'll let everyone know that this is a deliberate the, deep. Double. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's the way I'd like to see it go. Uh, and then there's all these, just as many people who are making maybe deep fakes, there's people trying to, you know, figure out how, figure out that they are one and, and, you know, out them, I guess you would say, you know, tell them it's fake. So there's like a constant race. I'll make one and somebody will try to out it. I think once they get to a point where, you know, you're making them on purpose, which is what we were talking about in the beginning of the, of the podcast, uh, a deep double, well, then you would want to stamp it and say, yes, we know it's not real. This isn't really necessarily the celebrity saying it in real person, but he's endorsed or she's endorsed it. And uh, it's not a fake, it's a double, right? And I think yeah. that's, I think we're, I don't, I couldn't find anything on this topic on the internet, but I think um, it's going to happen within some kind of regulation because otherwise there's no way to trust anything you see, right? And right. Talk about and we're going to get into some of the, also later on about some, the, maybe the ethics or, or, Right. You know, if we have time, it could go on forever. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we also yeah. have some there are some examples of it, of it being used now in real time. And we talk about that authenticity and mm -hmm. letting people know that um, uh, Ernst and Young did a um, uh, a sales sort of um, deep double. It wasn't really a, a deep fake. I mean, some people call it like we were saying before, called a deep fake, but it's really a deep double where salespeople were um, inside of their like client emails, mm. they used doubles of them. And then oh, they were able to customize the script and the double spoke 
as them. Okay, that's um, like a deep double, yeah. Okay. Right, pretty cool. Um, yeah. And they were saying that it wasn't always great, that it might have increased their, um, I have the exact terminology, I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, it basically increased Ooh. their customer acqui- like acquisition and it, it lowered the cost per acquisition. However, um, CAC, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but it, it, it impacted the uh, LTV, so lifetime value of the customer and decreased it um, because of some potential... Uh, trust issues? Trust issues. Now, that's just one, one viewpoint. Yeah, I'm sure there are other tiny. ones. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure you're right, but it's a tiny sampling, right? But if not done correctly, I imagine it could backfire horribly, right? You know, um, right. So the people. And think what else did they do? You were telling, you were saying they did something else. I like the one, yeah, with the, the language. That that one I think is po- so powerful. I, I don't even know how to, you know, that alone. So, for example, you know, I, I'm I'm not very good at Spanish, for example, or Japanese or something. But what if I you know, I wanted to present myself in that environment and, and I could do it through this mean. I could be speaking fluent Japanese, for example, or fluent mm. you know, Spanish. And so it gives me a far reach, you know. So I, I think there are a couple of examples that I've seen or heard about where celebrity, I think they're usually athletes, go to, say, for Korea, for example, as one I think it was. And they would be selling, I don't know, snacks, some form or something, Anything, or sneakers, yeah. sneakers or something. And they would um, dub them over with the Korean voice. Now, I don't think they're doing a complete deep double. I think they're just using the mouth. You know, they're making the the mouth part work and, and they're overlaying that. I don't think they're going to full. I think they're actually flying to Korea and they're shooting the video. And then they're using some of this technology that we're talking about to make it look like they're talking. To in mix Korean. it. Right. So that's more like post-production. Mm-hmm. CGI kind of stuff, but you could see what I'm talking about. What if you had that double? He doesn't have to get on the plane, John. He doesn't right. have to go anywhere. Right, right. And then he could approve it and, and sitting, you know, in his living room chair and see the video that they're going to run and say it's approved and then put the stamp of icon of authenticity on it and away it goes. I, I mean, I almost think of it like the old school, you know, they would pour like the hot wax on an envelope and like right, stamp, and stamp it, it with their <laughs> emblem of the of, the, of yeah, their their <laughs> their family crest or something. Yeah, um, yeah there there funny. are tons of um, <clears throat> applications for yeah for that, especially language with language and, and yeah. translation. Yeah. You ever watch yeah. a show on Netflix? Like, and um, what Netflix? Never heard of Netflix. It. Was like uh, <laughs> one of the foreign shows. I watched yeah, I Squid Games, yeah. and I cannot stand. For the life of me, yeah, when the matter. mouth does not match, yeah. I, I switch it. I switch yeah. it to the native language yeah. because I would rather see the mouth move in the real way, yeah. and then read the subtitles. I have a hard time with it too. It just I, it turns me off on. It feels things, fake. So. It feels so it fake to me. It feels but fake. But they were able to get yeah. those lips to move with it. Well, I don't think the audio is very good either. They do try, but it's not. Yeah. It sounds separate. It sounds like it's another audio track. Well, and, yeah, uh, I mean, it is another audio it track. It is. So that's really what it is. Right. right. But, so, yeah, I, I don't like watching usually. I, I start the first episode and then I'll probably turn it off as soon as I see it. But they're going to get very good at oh, yeah. soon canceling out. There's some really cool um, audio techniques, uh, machine learning for. For canceling out, audio. out audio voices yeah. but not canceling out the background noise. background that's what they need to do yeah, yeah. so they could lay the track better with it and then if they got the mouth on q2 well right that would I think be then you'll have, again it's all going to be done by you know machine learning and ai i think they're they're going to be able to just overlay it and uh, because like so talk about the technology john i yeah. mean it's kind of fascinating it's kind of reverse of what you think right <clears throat> right if i want to so, change my hmm? th- there's a there's a ton of there's a couple different approaches, but I, I think the main one is um, using GAN networks. G A N. That's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. general adversarial networks, um, and basically it's a deep learning technique where it's utilizing neural networks. Usually, like two of them. It could be using more, depending on like what sort of what you're trying to do, and it kind of pits them against each other. That's that adversarial yeah. piece of it, and and then you sort of swap. 
some of it out and feed one line through another line and it comes out the other end. And that's a really poor uh, explanation <laughs> of it without getting like really, really technical. But it, it's, it's, it's pretty cool the way it works. Um, right. And it's kind of pitting these two neural networks together. Um, and it's, it's the technology of um, GAN networks is, is used in, like everyone runs into it. So mm -hmm. uh, voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, um, mm -hmm. self-driving cars. So things like that, it's, it's being utilized today, not just in the deep fake technology. It's, it's used in other for, places. Yeah, it's too. a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. It um, so it's, um, there yeah, are yeah, tons of advances yeah, yeah. Yep. being mm -hmm. made in it, um, especially I think in the audio. And, and, and I, we both have backgrounds in like film and video mm -hmm. yeah. and audio, of course. And one of the things that's so interesting, and I think audio gets overlooked, but it's actually more important than video a lot of the times. Like you can yeah. have sort of a blurry video, but if you got crystal clear audio, it's it's game changing. But if you have yeah. awful audio and a crystal clear picture, it's useless. What do you what do you like? What are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I think the audio is is again into this whole thing about the um, a deep double has to be just as good if it doesn't sound like, you know the celebrity that we're talking about in, in general. I, I use the one like um, James Earl Jones versus an avatar. Right. That's my, you, you've heard me say that before. It's like, if an avatar tells me something, ah, whatever, you know? And, it, and again, it's if the audio's crap or it's just, a, you know, some kind of robotic bullshit. However, if James Earl Jones started telling me to do something, I'd probably do it. <laughs> and it was just because Ooh, of his voice. Buttery oh. voice. <laughs> well, yeah. And it just sounds like you're just going to do it, don't it? You? You Truth, know? wisdom. It's everything. Right. <laughs> and everything comes through on it. So, it, you know, that's, again, a, a difference also between, you know, a, there's psychological things going on in there. I, and I realize that. But that's the thing why an avatar, so I don't think, will ever take off as much. They're just seen as white noise. I think and, they're cheesy to me. And, yeah. They yeah. serve they a purpose, though. Right. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, I mean, you don't want James Earl Jones talking to you all the time. Otherwise, it wouldn't be special, right? I mean, right. I, I, if I had a robot, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We, we're talking about like they changed, you know, Alexa's voice and all those things. And you can pick different ones now and all that stuff. But, you know, I actually left it to the same one because I kind of got used to it, you know? And, uh, yeah. It's probably well, a psychological reason. And then it's like, are, are, what are people ready for, too? What's yeah, like, that's the we talked question, about this in the it? last podcast, yeah. a little bit about like when technology is available, yeah. if it is not adopted or like sometimes it, it takes a while for, for our social constructs and norms to catch up, to fit into that's these, correct. these molds yeah. or these technology pieces that are, that are, that exist. Um, so where are like, where could this be very valuable? Well, I mean, let's say, let's just go backwards for a minute here on trust and things. So one of the things is you know, people say, well, robots will never be trusted. And, and, and there's some fascinating studies and things that are coming out. And I happen to believe, again, this is part of the, you know, DNA of humans. And it's more of a, we could have a whole, we should probably bring some, a psychologist onto the show and just to talk about some of these things because, yeah. uh, so robots, in a sense, what we consider robots. I mean, when I was born, and I remember my first four or five year old, I was fascinated by robots. I mean, that's all I watched on TV, and I wanted my own robot. I mean, I, was, I couldn't wait to get older so I could build my own robot. I remember those are my earliest days, right? Uh, and I think as, as I've seen, um, I went to visit uh, 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 what they call assisted living the other day, and, and they, were, they had cats that were robotic cats that the uh, people with uh, dementia and some, you know, memory issues were, were petting while they were watching TV and doing some stuff. And I was what? Like, it's freaky <laughs> as hell. I was like, what? And, and I asked Leah, I said, do they know they're fake? And she said, well, yes, but that's not the point. It's part, it's a comfort feeling. And so the idea that fake things like, you know, there's another one where uh, there was that little app where you would tell the app your, your problems and it would, uh, it would, you know, reassure yeah. you. What was that They one? were used, uh, well, there's a couple out there, but like it, there was this one that was utilizing um, some AI, like for yeah. compassion and for empathy. Compassion, that was it. Yeah, empathy. Yeah. 
Something and they like found that. that people knew it was fake. They'd say, you know, at the end of the study, they were like, they were going to take away the app, I think. And they were like, no, no, I, I use it every day. I like it. And they go, you know, it's fake. And they go, well, yeah, but I still, I feel better when I talk to this app and it talks back to me, you know? And yeah. That, that, that's the thing I'm talking about, John. I think the adaption will, hap- adoption will happen as these kind of things happen where we're, we are not, uh, we're not, I mean, people will say, I'll never use a robot. Well, now look, everybody's using Alexa, right? I mean, people will say things, but I think once it's in their world and in their space, like you said, and the adoption happens, these, these things will be uh, absorbed very quickly. I yeah. Predict. Yeah. I don't and think it's really hard. There's also this, com- like, this piece of it where you, you people say the saying, like, if you if you want, want to play, pay to play. Like, mm-hmm. like but it's in the technology world it's sort of becoming like if you want to live you have to participate in the technology like gone are the days like almost gone are the days where you can walk around with cash and buy like especially since covid like you know there yeah. were a lot of places weren't accepting cash and they were doing contactless stuff like yeah, that put a nail in the cat in the cash coffin yeah. like even earlier yeah. but there there's a point where technology is adopted quicker and quicker and it seems like there's an acceleration of that. And I'm, I'm genuinely surprised at how quick some of the voice assistants and the, um, like that, that technology has mm-hmm. excelled in the last couple of years. And that's oh, really okay. a testament to not just the, the people that are developing it, but also like what artificial intelligence and machine learning can do. Because a lot of those ad- advances are because these systems are not hand programmed in the same traditional way. They're using and leveraging machine learning, artificial intelligence, which can produce code and data and information and improve at speeds far, far uh, passing humans. Oh, yeah. We just started this. Pro- yeah. It's sort of like we're building the rocket to go to the moon. <laughs> we haven't even built the full rocket yet. I mean, yeah. Or even like building. Coming the robot to build the rocket. Right, right. Yeah. It's because we can't, we cannot <laughs> yeah. program as much, like the amount of code needed to generate this stuff is so large that it, it, it cannot be done by, by humans. Our brains just can't keep track of it the same way a computer can. No, that's why we use them. I think it's going to, so I think the, there's more pros than cons. And um, so you brought up a couple and I think teaching aids will be the first place lectures because they can change the data, right? They can quickly go in when something changes or it's wrong or whatever. They don't have to reshoot the whole darn video, the training or the educational right. class. They could just reprint a whole book. Right. Now, now, in that case right now, you would have to probably re-export the whole thing and put it back online, but you wouldn't have to start all over, right? right. And you wouldn't have to go into editing and bring this person back in and, you know. And I think once it goes from there, though, to more fluid, where you can actually do it live. Now you're talking like you know replacing live streaming. It's one to one now. I mean, I, you can bring celebrities to the e-commerce realm, which is where I'm, you know, of course, thinking of this is going to really impact. Where I go there, and I'm I'm now presented with the owner of the store or the celebrity, and they're going to tell me or teach me or talk. You know, it's going to be amazing because I'll have a one to one connection with them. I might know they're fake, but I think I'm I'm really getting closer to that person than it would be some fake avatar, right, or some yeah. cartoon or something. Or deep, uh, deep double live yeah. selling. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess. I yeah, class, but that's what I was but, getting at. But then you mentioned something about like even though even though it's fake, but is it fake? And that's something you and I we we we've gone back and forth about it because when you talk about it. We say it as it's fake, I think because in our constructs, in our world, like it is kind of fake, but is it fake? Not if it holds, so here's the thing. So if you had an avatar of a, of a celebrity or a person, I call them celebrities, but it could just be, you and I both know we have some clients that you know run their own business and they're the head of the business and everybody, you know, the one influencer. of the reasons people, they're influencers, right? Yeah. So if their morals, their, all of the essence of them is put into this, where in other words, they're, the things they say and why they say them and how they treat people is is done electronically versus them. Is that anything, you know what I mean? Is 
as long as it's still holding to that moral ground, I think it's still fine. I don't, you know, uh, it's when that, that's why I, I think it, people don't like the deep fake. It's when they take somebody who's, who never would say something like that. And then they make them say something, right? Ha ha, that's right. funny, but that's evil. But I think if you go the opposite direction and if you really capture the essence of a person and you do it well, and then you let the computer do it, I think you're going to get even a better experience because now I can change language. I could even change the clothes, the look to keep up with the times. So, so who think of our, what is the one? Uh, Kentucky fried chicken. That guy's been around forever, right? Now it's kind of like the fifth celebrity, right? Right. But he's timeless, right? I mean, he, and even he doesn't change his clothing. You know what I mean? He looks like a white Southern uh, plantation owner or something crazy. But, but the point I'm trying to make here is that person could be, his essence, the way he talks, the way he acts, the way he's trying to sell you is something you can capture and put into a, a deep double. There's no, what's the difference, John? Really, what is the difference? Well, um, if you think... Like some of the first movies that were created, they were fake, right? They, mm. you know, but like to everybody else, think like, what, what is that? Well, that's a movie. Okay, what is that? That's fake. Yeah. It's sort of the same conversation. Same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's just a different, just a different yeah. level and a different technology and a different application of it. I'm sure in 10 years, we'll be having this conversation about holograms standing in front of each right, other. Right, right, exactly. Be the and next this one. all yeah. uh, <laughs> deep double that we're talking about, it's like, you know, well, old news, like old. a 1920s movie. <laughs> You're right. Deep doubles will be replaced by holograms. Uh, yeah, I, that which is just the ultimate double, right? I mean, um, I mean, I know the concern is, well, it might hurt the brand or, you know, things of this nature. But like I said, if, if yeah. a deep double it contains, if you have rules around it, the, like the double would never say this, right? And stuff like that. I mean, I would think it'd be okay It's if it goes awry, you know. Yeah. So you, and I... In terms of cheapening the brand, I think what, what we'll probably find is similar in other technologies and areas that are innovating. You will find some companies who will test it out, who will take the risk, who will jump on jump on <clears> the <throat> new technologies and kind of understand what those risks are and take them. And then there will be some people okay. who will and companies that will wait a very long time to use it and sit on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's going to be, I think a per customer and per product line basis too, depending on what you're selling. And I guess using how technology. Much, well, I, I mean, how much of what you're selling is based on the personality of the person or person selling it too. I think that's a big driver because if, you know, a good portion of your sales is, you know, educating and, and maybe, you know, have holding classes and then selling products or, you know, doing the live streaming or something well, this is different. Now you can live stream 24 seven, right? So if that was 10%, you know, a person can only be around 10% of the time and that's how much revenue they generated. What if they were around a hundred percent of the time, right? And then what if they were in different languages and what if they were in different countries? And I mean, it goes on from there. You don't, you don't have to be on TV anymore. There was a couple of people that they've gone off of television per se, and they're just on the internet because that can go anywhere. Right. I would think it would take a brand that was really focused on on that. It, it could take it to a whole new level. It might multiply by 10 because people can't see enough of that person or get enough of that person. Now they can. And what would, it's 24 seven, John. But you know? doesn't that also in some respect on the other side of it, dilute it and not make it special? Like isn't sometimes the novelty Ugh. of something and the exclusivity of only like, that like you go to see a concert of somebody right and it's that person and you're there and they're there in the same room it might be big and you might be so far away in the nosebleeds whatever <laughs> i was just gonna say you're not really no yeah. no but you exist in the same space and like what makes that special is that you are existing in that same space and what happens yeah. when like you can be doing 40 concerts at once in 20 different locations what's the point well, we'll see with ABBA, right? Aren't they coming out with their virtual? Oh, with their ABBA? Hol with their hologram, mm -hmm. hologram or something. Thing. But I mean, no. I, obviously, I, when I say it's everywhere and it's twenty four seven, I, I get that point. It could be too oversaturated. But w what I'm saying is, if you had a person who sells a particular product that is well known, I mean, again, I, 
not even to bring up the pillow guy, but it's just a perfect example because he's back on TV now. I just saw him the other day. So he's, he's doing it again, getting back in at it brain. again. <laughs> but, but he's an example. Well, you know, if you're selling pillows, he is the pillow guy. And, you know, and, and so if, but if he's able to talk to you, John, and address you, maybe, maybe it really appeals to you. And he's, you know, he's talking to you saying, well, he's how, awful. John, how do you sleep, John? <laughs> do you need a firm pillow, John? I mean, let me show you this pillow. You know, it's a total, if you really love that guy, well, then you're really going to yeah. love that experience, right? <laughs> I, know. I hate that guy. You know, I got to pick somebody else, but. You got to pick maybe, somebody more neutral. Well, remember, you know, remember the commercials, you always remember the ones you really love or the ones you really hate. So it's, it's, it's worse. Isn't that, isn't that crazy, right? It's yeah. still marketing. The ones though, in like, the middle, right. hate it. Yeah. The ones in the middle are the ones you forget. But you see my point. Totally. I, I yeah, I agree if he's 24-7 and everywhere you turn, you see this guy and then you're like, oh, this damn robot's all over the place. Well, yeah, if they do that kind of stuff like the remarketing, you know, where you, you've already bought the pillow and the guy's still following you. The retargeting. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah it, that would probably not work. But I'm thinking the languages, I'm thinking, you know, being able to do live streaming at different hours, at different time zones. I mean, I could give you a lot of little examples that would be, you know, you would clearly see. You know, if I was live streaming once on the East Coast at this time, but I could live stream in, you know, on the West Coast or in Hawaii or Tokyo and get there the right time when they're, you know, their audience is ready. Oh, that, but that one person couldn't do it. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. they need sleep. So I see those kind of things being uh, for some brands being extremely profitable. So, so this is uh, the, the deep double, the deep fake. Um, it's not going anywhere. It's just going to keep heating up. And yeah. there are, I think in closing, there are ap applications for this now that you can use yeah. and start to investigate it and see maybe if it's applicable yeah. to your brand. I'm going to start with voice. <laughs> that's, maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you can't do the video yet, but by the time you get to the video, you'll already have mastered the voice. That's what well, I'm we were working on some pretty cool things with like product stories and like right. where we're using influencers' voices and stitching right. together really cool That's stuff. I mean. So maybe down we'll the do road, that. We might have something. That would be a good place to start. But yeah, get started, I think, because this thing's this train's left the station.